The patient is positioned with their heels at the end of the table. We then move their pelvis, the ipsilateral side, the side that you're doing surgery, right to the edge of the bed, which gives us the best leverage for positioning the leg against the leg holder or post. After the patient is positioned, a safety belt is placed around their waist. Next, we will place the tourniquet. With an assistant holding the leg, we first wrap cast padding once or twice around the thigh, trying to avoid wrinkles. Perfect. Next, we will place the tourniquet. The tourniquet is held in position with Velcro, and it's important to remember to put this high enough that after the patient is prepped and draped, it will be high enough or proximal on the thigh that there is room to work. And generally, we'll set the pressure on 350 millimeter mercury for a normal adult male or female. Finally, a plastic drape is affixed to the patient's thigh so that the preparation solution does not drip up and under the tourniquet. After the tourniquet is placed, the leg is lowered into the circumferential leg holder, which we will demonstrate first. The leg holder is squeezed closed, the straps are placed, and the foot of the bed is lowered. A surgical assistant holding the leg may then push the leg laterally or into valgus to expose the medial compartment and medially or into varus to expose the lateral compartment. If a surgeon is operating without an assistant, the surgeon may push the leg on his hip and use his own hip to position the leg laterally or valgus for the medial compartment and medially or varus on his opposite hip for the lateral compartment. Lateral post is locked into position. The post allows the surgeon or his assistant to grasp the foot and push it into valgus or push it laterally to expose the medial compartment. If a surgeon is working without an assistant, he can place the leg on his hip and use his hip to push the leg laterally or into valgus while using his hands to operate the camera and instruments in the medial compartment. After medial compartment arthroscopy is completed, the surgeon bends the knee off the end of the table. The post may be lowered. This allows arthroscopy of the intercondylar notch. The surgeon takes the ankle and rests it across the contralateral leg with the knee bent to 90 degrees and sometimes applies pressure on the knee. Pushing the knee to the floor allows the hip to externally rotate, which imparts a varus force, allowing for lateral compartment opening and arthroscopy. Now we are going to demonstrate draping for knee arthroscopy, which is performed in layers. With an assistant holding the leg, the first layer is applied by affixing a sticky drape, first with the tails going up. Next, a second sticky drape may be applied, this time with the tails facing down. Finally, an arthroscopy drape is positioned over the foot. These generally have a hole or diaphragm which seals the arthroscopic fluid and prevents it from leaking up under the tourniquet or off of the arthroscopic field. As an option, an impermeable stockinette may be placed over the foot to seal it off from the arthroscopic field. The stockinette may be held in position with a Coban tape, which sticks to itself and holds it in place.